Hey, it's Gina from Tarot and Time in Kent, Connecticut. And I'm actually filming here today at our sister store, Chestnut Woodworking, an antique flooring company. It's our original store and Tarot and Time was added on in 2020. So we sell a lot of earth-friendly goods and unique finds in addition to the antique wood flooring. That's the main business here. So I'm filming here today in this beautiful counter and I am chose a spread called the diamond spread from Sheila Heights book of 101 tarot spreads comes in really handy when you really want to be specific with your reading you can write out your own spread but sometimes it's easier to use one that's already been made up for you so I chose the diamond spread because it's Taurus season and Taurus it is ruled by the planet Venus and Venus has everything to do with money, with anything you value, and jewelry, and wallets, and all that kind of beautiful stuff. So, in the thick of Taurus season, I thought the diamond spread would be appropriate, and it really helps us to know what your relationship is really about. So, I want you to pick one relationship to focus on for this reading whether it be a love relationship or a friendship or a family member kind of love or even a business relationship. Whatever relationship that comes to your mind first is probably the right one. So this reading will help identify each party's motivation for being in the relationship and really getting the most out of it, being aware of what's going on and so you can value it and value yourself in it and the, and the person that you're in relationship with. So I picked three cards from the Tattoo Tarot that kind of felt like diamondish pentacles kind of energy. Here's the Queen of Pentacles. She's holding this beautiful pentacle and she's looking beautiful and she's really examining, really examining its value to her. I have, this one kind of jumped out, the Eight of Wands. It almost looks like a diamond. Eight of Wands is often referred to as the honeymoon card, but it's Eight of Fire, so it's a lot of passionate energy and in this like infinite loop. So that will be pile number two. And then pile number three is the Ace of Pentacles. Look at her. I love this deck. Illustrations are so beautiful. So there she is with her big pentacle there. So pick a pile and let's get started. Okay, let's get started with pile number one, this beautiful queen of pentacles. She would be a Taurus queen. And this is the card that I'm gonna use for position number one to represent you, because you picked it. And we're, I have, um, I'm working with a couple other decks here. I have the Witch's Tarot, the Animal, I'll show you the covers of them. The Witch's Tarot is this one. I have the Animal Totem, this beautiful one. Um, I have the Ethereal Visions, this one that you've seen me use a lot that has uh, a lot of gold inlaid in gold, so appropriate for this kind of spread. And then the Tattoo Tarot, which is you. Okay, so the other cards, I have not looked at them yet. I picked two from each deck. I'm going to lay these out here. So position number two is gonna be the heart of the matter. Three is the other person. Position four is your relationship baggage. Five is their relationship baggage. Six is the purpose of this relationship. Seven is your focus or intention. Eight, their focus or intention. And nine, where this relationship is going. Okay, so this is, this is a fun one. Let's see what we, what we get here. So we already know that you are the queen of pentacles. So this is very grounded energy. She knows her value. She knows her worth. I mean, that's, I guess that's, I don't, I don't know if I like how I said that. She knows what she brings to the table. Let's say, let's put it like that. She knows that just by being her true self, that she brings something of value to the table. 
She, um, again, is ruled by Venus, so it rules all things beautiful, and it's about loving yourself. Loving yourself for who you are, really just the way you are. The jewelry, the hair, all that stuff is wonderful, and, and enjoy it, but it's about who you truly are. That's what you're bringing to the table. So two, the heart of the matter in this relationship. Here's the queen of wands, queen of fire. She's my favorite. She has the words burn tattooed on her fingers, burn. And the t queen of wands is a wild creature. There's no taming her. There's no, t no, um, I think of the queen of wands as someone who's been told that they're too much a lot of their life, that they need to tone it down. And guess what? Those people were wrong. The queen of wands can't tone it down. She's the queen of fire. So the heart of the matter here in this relationship has to do with there's a lot of passion. Um, there's a lot of leaving behind the things that didn't work. Um, the burning just makes me feel like just leaving, moving on. And the idea of having to tone something down seems to be a focal point, the heart of what's going on here. So let's come back to that as we go. Three, this is gonna represent the other person that you're in the relationship with. Here's the Ace of Cups. So this is some little rare bird here. And the Ace of Cups is the cup of pleasure. It's a one, so it's, it's an ace, which I think of as high, but it's really a one. So it's a start of something new. It's cups, so it's water, it's emotions. It's, this is often like the satisfaction card. Or it can sometimes be um, related to sexual satisfaction, that maybe that's what the other person is there for. So if this is a love reading, you may want to look at it from that viewpoint. If this is not a love reading, the other person is definitely um, feeling some kind of fulfillment from you and some kind of pleasure being in your presence. Position number four, your relationship baggage. Let's see what baggage you're hauling along with you in this relationship. So here's the page of pentacles. I like that it's a woman. Often the page is, a, is seen as a young boy. This is a young girl holding this large pentacle. And so, so being a page, being young, she's new at this. Pentacles, well, it's almost like, I, I, I don't know, I, I'm kind of getting like that they're like almost like debt, that you're bringing debt into the relationship. Or maybe it's just that you've had a lot of emotional hurts that are that you're kind of bringing along with you and more from a young age, from like the childhood, from your childhood, something that happened in the younger years. So I'm gonna refer back to this as we go along and see what comes up. Because we have you now as the queen of pentacles, so it's a mature, and, and this doesn't, this is, non-gender it's just the queen would be more re receiving more nurturing more yin energy the queen of pentacles here as you so it's more mature version than a page right in a, in a higher up position and so the the relationship baggage is almost like the insecurity of not knowing enough or not knowing what you bring to the table their relationship baggage is the Queen of Swords. Now, I don't, can you see her face there? She looks a little downtrodden in this view of her. Um, the Queen of Swords is, is a tough, tough, tough female energy. She is, can sometimes be considered a little stern when really she's just really in, she's in a powerful position she has to make very good boundaries. She would be considered the queen of boundaries. She's the queen of communication. So maybe she has to verbalize things with people that maybe she doesn't want to. 
Queen of Swords is often a writer or some form of communication. And so the emotional baggage would have to do, I'm feeling like there's this guardedness of always having to cut ties in past relationships and that it's a little exhausting and almost kind of this look on her face like, hmm, I hope that this isn't the way it's gonna have to go again. So um, she has her sword put down, hoping that this time, this, this cutting off doesn't have to be made. Position number six, the purpose of this relationship. Well, this is the Hierophant. It's called the High Priest in this deck. And it's card number five, Major Arcana number five. It's our first Major Arcana that showed up. So the purpose of the relationship, when you have a Major Arcana there, is definitely showing me that there's something there that you really needed to learn, that you really need to learn. And this card is considered one of the theme cards of the year. This is 2021. If you add up 2021, it equals five. So it corresponds to the major arcanas that equal five. So one of them is the high priest or the hierophant, and the other one is temperance. So both cards, the high priest and uh, temperance, are Sagittarius cards. They're ruled by Jupiter, a planet of luck and blessings and expansion. The high priest wants you to reconnect with your, high, with your higher power. It has to do with your spirituality. And there's two keys here at the bottom. And he's pointing upwards. So there's this opportunity to open up this knowledge. One of the keys has the moon and one of the keys has the sun. And we're talking about in relationships. So the sun and the moon are a perfect example of opposites attracting, right? And so card number five, wanting you to know that there's a bigger picture here, knowing that any changes that need to be made in this relationship can be thought about this year because five has to do a change and this is the card of the year. So keep connecting with your higher power. This relationship is bigger than just man's world. This relationship is helping you connect higher, see a bigger picture, because Sagittarius is the archer, the arrow that's shot into the future. And so it comes back, when you're here in the present moment, There, it's almost like um, there's a bigger picture. There's something in the future bigger for you. And so please make any changes this year to this relationship that need to be made. Knowing, respecting that there is a higher purpose to the relationship than meets the eye. Okay. And position number seven, your focus or intention. This is your focus or intention. Okay. Nine of Pentacles. And she's checking on her grapes and they're almost ready to be harvested. And everything, there's so much there. There's, it's nine to me is the highest point in a minor arcanas because 10 is kind of when it shifts into a new stage. So there's a lot there. There's a lot available. There is a lot for you there. So your focus is on all the goodness, all the value, all the loveliness, all the richness, and the sweetness of it. Now, their focus or intention in this relationship, ooh, it's the devil card. It's a wild animal there. So, <clears throat> I keep picking up a lot of like, there's a lot of sexual energy here. And again, if this is not a love relationship, this is something, this person, um, there's something that they're learning from you about how to express themselves. Maybe like to learn if it's a non-sexual relationship, it could be that they're learning how to be in a relationship non-sexual. So it could be the flip of that too. If it, um, the devil is card number 15. It's major arcana number 15. It's, it's ruled by Saturn. And it, the devil is like anything below the belt. And so it can be emotions that are pushed down. 
Saturn makes a lot of rules for how things need to be here. And so this devil is just lashing out of that, that doesn't want to be contained in the rules and kind of really um, looking for more satisfaction in life and less restriction. That's what I'm getting. So um, there's kind of something that you like, it's almost like your focus is really on beauty and having a beautiful time and having uh, nine of pentacles is like not having financial problems and the devil is like just wants to this version of the devil just wants to rip loose from the chains that bind and maybe um the heart of the matter being that queen of wands being that dynamic energy and they feel a dynamic energy coming from you being in relationship with you so where this relationship is going well, here's the tower card. So it's a major arcana and there's definitely going to be some unpredictable events that happen. Um, the tower def it definitely moves things out of the way. So I can't say that this is going to be an even keel relationship. There's going to be changes. They're out of your control. There is nothing really that you can do except accept what the changes that come. This is Uranus energy. This is Uranus is uh, conjunct the sun right now. So they're working together with the sun. So there it's a lot of unpredictableness can come in. Now it also can come in as helpful friends, even though I know it looks like a fiery mess here. Uh, the tower is ruled by Uranus. It's uh, associated with the sign Aquarius. And that's associated with friends. So this bolt of lightning, the tower is often seen as a bolt of lightning and can bring in unpredictable changes. Also, I would allow that to come in as insights that come in, bolts of insight, uh, helpful friends that just appear out of nowhere. And a helpful friend is a stranger that shows up. So there could be information that's given to you from a stranger, something that comes in and, and changes things. And back here with the purpose of this relationship, it kind of reminds me of these keys again. There's going to be something that comes in that's gonna help open up some new doors for you, new understanding of what's going on in this relationship. So there's going to be changes in it, allow it to be for the better, envision it for the better. And I'm just going to pull one more card just to see what comes in after the tower. The five of pentacles. The five of wands. And the queen of swords. Okay. Well, the five of pentacles usually feels like lack of money or lack, but this tree, even though it's winter and everything looks frozen, there are still pentacles there. There's, it's a five, so there's the change, the change of value. It's another five with the five of wands, which I just dropped. Okay, I guess it doesn't wanna be here. Change of passion, there's a little, please avoid arguing, I guess is the bottom line. Choose peace. Allow the changes. The changes are out of your hand. So instead of resisting and fighting and blaming, let's move on past that. Here's the Queen of Swords again. Coming up, I love this version of her. She's got like nice shoe, high heeled shoes on. She's looking a lot more content than the last Queen of Swords. She's got beautiful lilac in her lap. And she is open. She's actually sitting with her hand like this. She's open to the information coming from her, coming to her, coming through her, coming from her. And so um, I think there's going to be some information that's going to come in that's going to be helpful for you to understand this relationship, to understand the changes that need to be made, to help connect you more with your higher power, to help you learn to trust your intuition more. Um, and the Queen of Swords last time came up as their emotional baggage. So it's definitely gonna be stirring the pot about their baggage and about making boundaries. And, um, but it's also a queen. So 
uh, pay attention to what's going on, pay attention to the messages that come, be open to the change, please don't argue about it, and please, whatever you do, make sure that you are being your true self and not taming yourself down for anyone else. Okay, I'm here with pile number two. So for the first position, we're going to use the top card as you. You pick this card and we're gonna use it. So the eight of wands, the eight of just passionate, uh, looping energy of passion. Uh, it's thought of as the honeymoon card, it's travel, fun, and yeah, it can be overstimulating sometimes and um, maybe needs to ground a little bit, but it sure is fun when it's happening. So I'm using the decks that I mentioned before. I have not looked at any of these cards. I'm going to place them randomly in the positions of the reading. So the heart of the matter will be position two, the other person, three, position four, your relationship baggage, Five is their relationship baggage. Six is the purpose of this relationship. Seven, your focus or intention. Eight, their focus or intention. And nine, where is this relationship heading? Okay, so you picked the relationship that you're focusing on. Let's see what we have here for the heart of the matter. Here's the Knight of Cups. The knight is coming in, offering this cup. I think of it as the ace of cups, this cup of satisfaction. There's an offer being made, and it feels romantic and loving. Now, if this is not a love relationship, this you could minus out the romance and just think of it as a cup of satisfaction. Something is being offered. It feels like it's being offered in a kind way, in an artistic, creative way and um, kind of a gentleness to it. Position number three, this is gonna be the other person. So we have you up here as this, and let's see what we have them as. We have them as a wheel of fortune. It's interesting because they both kind of look like wheels. So you, a lot of similarities, the eight of wands, fire. The wheel of fortune is a Sagittarius card. It's also fire. It's a 10 and you break a 10 down it's actually a one so the other person I would say is very independent used to being independent um, the cup there that this knight was holding offering to you is up here along with a pentacle a wand and a sword so all the elements there but the cup of emotion is being offered to you this is the Wheel of Fortune that is about success through your surrendering. So that is the other person. Let's see, position number four, your relationship baggage. So what baggage are you hauling with you into this relationship? It's funny, it's almost like he is hauling it. It's the Seven of Swords. So he's carrying, he's got four swords in his arm, one in his hand, so he's carrying the Five of Swords and he's got two swords on the ground. So I would definitely see this, like the two swords on the ground are like the past relationships, the past, anything to co. Uh, swords can actually be just the wound of it. And he's carrying five, so he's ready for change. Five is uh, associated with change, change of mind, change of thought, a new way to think but it's still guarded because it knows that these, there's, been, there's been wounds in the past. And it's kind of um, insinuating like a three of swords here, that past heartache. So there's a little bit of like concern about that, which is normal in any relationship. So that's your baggage that you're bringing. And let's see what their baggage is. Oh, interesting, it's the two of swords. And this bird is like sitting there taking a look out at the water and like almost taking a pause to, again, it's kind of the same thing. You almost are bringing the same thing to the table. There's, there's a little bit of concern, maybe a little bit of guardedness about being in relationship, um, kind of anxious thoughts about it. And you know, it, 
that can happen in friendships. It can happen in any relationship, anything that there's co. It doesn't have to be a love relationship. So let's see. Position number six is the purpose of this relationship. Here's the seven of swords again. This little uh, maybe prairie dog is popping up there. Been hiding out for a while underground, making tunnels. And here he is popping up the seven of swords. Now seven is associated with your spiritual path. Swords is again the air, air element. It has to do with uh, communication and um, thought. And so really the baggage that you bring to the table, the purpose of the relationship is to heal that. And this other person is contemplating that too. So it seems like the what you you have similarities in what you uh, what you're looking to get out of this relationship, a mentally stimulating relationship where you where communication is open, um, even though there's a tendency to hide or retreat on both of your parts, um, their part more to retreat, your part maybe to withhold. Is that the same thing? Kind of, sort of. Um, so you're willing to show up and try to make this happen. Your tendency is going to be to run, and but you're willing to give this a try. And so this is a, this seems like a very good partnership to help heal that. So position number seven, your focus or intention. And we have the nine of wands. So it's interesting that this card is in black and white. He looks pretty beat up. But it's almost like your focus or intention is to come back to life. Like there's been a lot of relationships that were not healthy for you. There's been a lot of, uh, nine of like wands is a lot of stimulation, overstimulation, and you're really looking to channel it properly because what you, what you came up as was the Eight of Wands, right? And now this is the Nine of Wands, but lacking color. So your intention is really to bring back some vitality, some life, some passion, some color into your life and to, to help heal those wounds. And their focus or intention in the relationship is the Five of Swords. Interesting, a lot of swords there. Uh, there we go. So their intention is for a change, a change of what's been going on, a change of thought, a change of trying to heal the wound of those past relationships. So it seems, again, it seems like you're really coming from it from the same place. Your wounds feel a little bit more physical. Their wounds feel a little bit more mental. Uh, maybe yours is just a physical burden. A lot of giving and a lot of overworking, where theirs feels like a lot of mental um, anguish. So where this relationship is going. Here's the Six of Wands. So this relationship can go anywhere that you want it to. It's a six, I think of six as like a time when you make, when you move ahead, moving forward. It's wands, so it's it's fire, it's passionate, and she's just kind of looking up, looking to the future. And she has all these like crystal balls in front of her. So this can be, it's going kind of almost like, I hate to use a cheesy word like destiny, but where this is destined to go to. This is moving in the right direction. I see a lot of life and a lot of, it's just such an opposite of like, this lack of color card there's so much color here so there it's moving in the direction of getting your vitality back living bigger and um moving on from the wounds just really having a more fun experience now i'm just going to pull one more card just because i want to maybe two and see what comes in after this last card i've got the page of swords and the Temperance card, which is actually the card of the year. Card, Major Arcana number uh, 14, which one in five equals, I'm sorry, one in four equals five, so it's five is the number associated with 2021. And the Page of Swords, moving very fast. 
So I actually think that you actually could be traveling together because this did, you did initially come up as the honeymoon card. I can see you're looking forward, looking ahead, thinking about where you wanna go, what you wanna do. This feels very tropical. And the Page of Swords moves very quickly. So there's fast movement forward. Um, temperance is wants you to take care of your health and well-being. So I'm thinking like some kind of trip, some kind of wellness trip would be really healthy for you. This is the ostrich. No, I'm sorry, why am I calling it ostrich? This flamingo, it only gets pink when it eats the proper diet. It needs to eat shrimp and it needs to be eating well to be its beautiful self. So this would be a great time to, if you're going to take a trip, maybe it would be nice to go somewhere that's health orientated and where you can rest, relax, recharge, because I feel like you've been really run down, both of you. And so if there's a way to get away together, again, it's the honeymoon card, but if this is not a love relationship, it's still a card of travel. So if there's friendship, or maybe it's just going to a local spa together, or doing something, taking a walk, sharing some good meals together, and keeping health in the forefront, because really, the purpose of this relationship is a spiritual bond, a spiritual to help each other on the path moving forward, to show up, to stop hiding, and to not be afraid to be yourself. Okay, thanks for joining me. Okay, I'm back with pile number three. I have the Ace of Pentacles here that we're going to use in position number one to represent you this lovely creature. Now, I have two cards from each of the piles I mentioned, or decks that I mentioned before. I have not looked at any of these. I'm going to randomly place them in the positions of the reading. So, part of the matter, position three, the other person, position four, your relationship baggage, position five, their relationship baggage, six, the purpose of this relationship, Seven, your focus or intention. Eight, their focus or intention. And nine, where is this relationship going? So you pick the relationship that you wanna discuss. Let's see what comes up. So the heart of the matter, we have the six of swords, this flying squirrel. Who knew squirrels could fly? They actually can't, they glide, but it sure looks like they're flying and it sure did scare me the first time that I saw it. Six of Swords is about moving forward. And swords being the air element can rule your thoughts, your mind. And it's really like, feels like moving forward in this like unpredictable, like wow, who knew a squirrel could fly like that kind of way. And so the heart of the matter is just like getting out there and living and moving forward and putting yourself out there. So this card is gonna represent the other person. So we have the Ace of Pentacles for you. And for the other person, we have the Wheel of Fortune. Very interesting. So I think of the Ace of Pentacles, it's a one, right? And the Wheel of Fortune is major arcana number 10. One and zero equals one. In numerology, we would call the Wheel of Fortune a one. We could. So you're both ones, which is interesting. You both have this freshness like this newness. I think of an ace as such a high, I think of it as a lucky card, even though it's a one, it's to me, it'll always be a high card, a luck card. And then the Wheel of Fortune is ruled by Jupiter, which is the planet of luck and blessings. So there's this likeness to each other. There's the, and it's like this, there's like this friskiness. There's this unpredictability about both of you. And I kind of like it. The Wheel of Fortune is a Sagittarius card. It's about um, higher learning, but I think of it in higher learning in not in just like going back to school, which it could be, but it rules spirituality. It rules your connection to your higher power. And so really updating that, not just taking what was given to you and learning more. Now this one's got an astrology chart in the background. So maybe learning something more alternative that's that that aligns to you so that would be the other person would be um, 
associated with that kind of stuff. It's also the Wheel of Fortune is about surrendering to being on this wheel. Again, it's not the Wheel of Garbage, it's the Wheel of Fortune. So we have two very intense humans coming together in a relationship, looking to move forward and kind of keep people on their toes is what I'm getting. Your relationship baggage that you're bringing in, let's see what you're hauling in with you. So here's the King of Cups. He's a beaver and he's damming up that water, damming up those emotions, those damn emotions. He, mm, he likes to be in control. He likes things to go the way he wants it to go and not go the way he doesn't want it to go. So he's kind of emotionally in charge here. And so maybe you have a tendency to not want things to, to kind of control the situation emotion, like emotionally and maybe not want to deal with um, some emotions. Maybe that's something you try to avoid. Maybe you just so into having fun that you don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. So let's see what, what else comes up for you. Let's talk about them, what their emotional baggage is that they bring to the table. And here's the karma card. This is um, card number 20. It's actually a judgment card. And so, well, plain and simply, there's some issues that, it being the karma card, it's like there's some issues that they've had in past relationships because it's card number 20. So it's a two. And so there's these karmic relationships that they've had that keep kind of showing up and they keep having to learn from it. And obviously things still need to be learned because it keeps it keeps coming back and so um, that is their emotional baggage and the, here's an opportunity to break that that cycle of it continuing to happen the purpose of this relationship and here's the five of swords i love this picture it feels like Salvador Dali style. It really reminds me of him. And so it's five. Five is the 2021 is a five year. This is so this is really work that needs to be done now in the mind. The purpose of this relationship to change how you're thinking to let's see. There's it's interesting that there's Three Swords is the main focus. So those past hurts. The Three of Swords is like the two swords of the relationship and the one sword where you showed people exactly how to hurt you or your role in it. So there's the three. And then there's another sword fallen there. And then there's another sword fallen up the stairs a little higher. So there's some relationship wounds in the background that need to be left behind. They need to be transformed and they are being transformed. There's like a fish kind of like jumping up. This is like, looks like a melting fish here. And so anything's possible. You can transform these thoughts. We're all human. We've all had failed relationships. We've all had failed thoughts. The tears that need to be cried and but then there's like a higher mind it's going up the stairs to this higher mind so the purpose of this relationship is really to improve yourself to make the changes to learn from it to move on from the pain and to be bigger people and so great you can offer this to each other as relationships as humans it's how we learn it's how we grow we grow through all these different relationships in our lives and so whatever, um, like I said, whether this be a love relationship, friendship, business, whatever this is, there's a huge chance for growth here. Now, your focus or intention, your focus or intention in this relationship that you bring in. Here's the queen of wands. I love her. She reminds me, Colleen, if you're listening, Colleen from Florida, she reminds me of you lovely like you and she is a passionate fire queen she is dynamic and so your focus or intention you bring such passion 
such excitement. The Queen of Wands is a world traveler and um, just so bright and intelligent and lovely. So you bring that kind of energy to the table. Their focus or intention is the Nine of Wands. So there's a lot going on there. They're overseeing a lot. It's a lot of work. And so they're really focused. They have a lot going on. There's a lot that they're attending to. And it's Nine of Wands. So it's almost like I'm getting the impression that like they're attracted to you in this friendship because like you are so, you're the queen of fire. Like they're, they're this human version of overseeing all this fire. But you're like laid back and like chill and like, yeah, I, I oversee fire every day. So there's almost like this sureness about you that um, they're probably very attracted to that you can do it, you can oversee things in style. And um, so their focus, their intention, they are very focused, but there's a lot that they're focusing on, overstimulation. So where is this relationship going? Well, it's the magician. I always love when he shows up. So this relationship can go anywhere you want it to go because the magician can make anything happen. It's a one. So there's something fresh and new, and we already went through that the Ace of Pentacles is a one that came up as you, and the 10, the Wheel of Fortune is a one, the other person. So where is this relationship going with a one? It's going wherever you wanna take it. Now the magician, I think of it as related to Scorpio, it's deep down emotions, and the magician knows how to work it, and knows how to transform it, which is good news for you since you came up as this King of Cups who likes to be in control of water. And so what a better way to use it more powerfully, this is water energy also, is that using all the elements, making the magic to make anything happen that you want. Now, their relationship baggage came up as karma, which is a judgment card, which is also related to Scorpio. So there is, it's going in a direction that's really gonna help both of you to your, this uh, other person with their karmic patterns and transforming that. There's an ability to break a cycle that may have been going on for many lifetimes. If you don't believe in past lives, it can be many years in this lifetime. There's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for you to uh, still kind of be in control of emotions, but in a much less stressful way, in a magical way. So I just wanna pull one or two more cards and see where else this relationship is going. Okay, so I've got the King of Swords here. He's super big business. So if this is a business relationship, good. It's going in the right way. Uh, King of Swords is dynamic. He is really, really great businessman. He's a writer. He's, he's a king of communication, king of thought, and I wouldn't mess with him. And so it's definitely going in a very powerful direction. And then you have the world card. Look at that. The world is really, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like the magician's the beginning of the story. It's the first teacher the fool meets on his journey. And the world is the last major arcana the fool meets on the journey. So there is a lot of success that's coming from this relationship. Now there are certain rules that may need to be followed and over time you will find success with that. So um, just work through um, it, it, I get the impression that you don't, oh, the rules are kind of tough for you both, um, but the more that you learn to work with them and you have the magic to transform things and things are gonna be very successful in this relationship. And so what, what's better than to work through karmic, karmic issues and get out there and live dynamically, heal some past wounds, learn how to try to be in control a little less and um, live a large life. So thank you for joining me.